the law, history, poetry, the gospels, major and minor prophets, and the epistles. These 60 books of wonder and truth are divinely inspired and composed by human authors. The best-selling book of all time, it is alive, active, transcending time and culture. This book is a repository of hope and wisdom. It serves as the foundation for countless laws, cultural practices, and values that have shaped humanity. In some parts of the world, people have faced persecution, torture, and even death to possess this sacred text. The profundity of this book ought to compel us to reflect on the mysteries of life and death, inviting us to transform our thoughts and actions in the light of its truth. As we embark on this journey through the pages of this book, let us open ourselves to the Word of God, allowing it to breathe life into us. This book has the power to fill us with the revelation of life and its transformative force. The Bible, our light on the journey of discovery and faith. Let us begin. Well, hey, everybody, it's to have you with us for our kickoff of this brand new series that we're entitling The Bible. It's a three-part message series. I'll tell you more about that here in a second. First of all, I want to say a big hello to our church online family. You're coming to us here from Texas, from Dallas, from around America and the world. And I want to give a big shout out to all the guys and gals in every single department of corrections around America. Would you guys just make everybody that's coming to us online in the correctional facilities feel at home and welcome. God bless you guys. Woohoo! Well, hey, I, we're going to jump into this message today, and I am so excited. In fact, this series has been strategically designed to help all of us to love, to learn, and to begin to live the Bible the way that God has always intended for us to live it. And I'm just telling you, I am so excited. And you might say, well, Chris, why is that so important? I'll tell you why. It's because Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 7. Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine, and notice this, not just hears them, but puts them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And I will tell you that one of the main motivations for this series isn't just so that you would learn what the Bible says. No, it's so much bigger than that. In fact, one of the greatest motivations that we have for this series is so that you would be prepared for the bad days that are coming your way in 2023. I'm just telling you, there are some bad days, bad moments that are coming for you in 2023. And people say, well, Chris, can't you be more positive? All right, I'm positive. You're going to have some bad days in 2023. But when you build your life on the power of God's word, all of a sudden it bring, brings stability and strength into your life. Like It's like the two-winged plane. It, it, it builds this balance that you can build your life upon. And so what I want to do in this message today, I actually want to give you what I'm calling the owner's manual for the Bible. In fact, here's what I know. The more that you understand something, the more that you have the capacity to love something. In fact, uh, I'll just say it like this, that when I first married my wife Tatum, I was in love with her, but I didn't understand her. In fact, this month, we're celebrating our 24th wedding anniversary. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, 24 years. I'm telling you, after 24 years, I'm still trying to figure that girl out. Because it just sometimes, you just, ladies, let me just tell you something. I'm, just, I'm so sorry, but you are sometimes so difficult to understand. It's just truth. 
fact, it reminds me of the story of this guy. He was walking along the beach in California and up washed this little, this little genie bottle. And so he rubs it and out pops a little genie. The genie says, I'm going to give you one wish. And the guy said, that's incredible. That's awesome. He's like, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii, but I'm just not going to get on a plane. I'm petrified. I am scared of planes. He said, so my wish is that I want you to build me a bridge from California to Hawaii, to which the the genie said, listen, (laughs) that's almost a nearly impossible wish. Like, do you know how hard it would be to do something like that? Imagine all of the concrete, all of the steel, all the laborers it would take to make something like that. I'm so sorry, sir, you're going to have to figure out a different wish. To which the man said, well, then I wish that you would help me to understand my wife. The genie said, would you like one lane or two lanes? (laughs) Come on, everybody. Work with me. I've been here all weekend long. I just tell you, that's, that's funny. I don't care what you say. So my wife and I, we just got back from a vacation, and while we were on vacation, she shared with me a story about her that I had never heard. And so when she finished up sharing it, I thought to myself, my goodness, I know more about you now than I've ever known. Like, I I can understand you. I love you now more. In fact, I love my wife more now than when I first married her, because I understand her more. And I'm just going to tell you that that is my goal for all of us in this message today. Not just that you would understand more of the Bible, but that you would fall in love with God's word. And so I want to begin it today by letting you know this, that the word Bible actually means book. It's because... The Greek word for Bible actually is the word biblios. And you may not know this, but in the Greek culture, in the Greek world, ancient world, there used to be an ancient city called Biblios. And it was there that they was the major importer of all kinds of papyrus, which is what they make paper out of. And that's how the Bible has derived its name. But you need to know today that the Bible is not some little B book. It is a capital B book. Like it is the most read, best selling book of all times. Like it is the book that has defined time. Like it is God's word. And I'm just going to tell you that next week you're going to want to make sure that you're back because I'm going to teach you about the authority of God's word, the accuracy of God's word. And what I share with you is going to blow your mind. You're going to walk away from next week thinking, oh my goodness, the Bible is actually really the holy word of God. In fact, let me just just give you one thought here today just to kind of whet your appetite and it's this the bible was actually written over a period of 1600 years in over a dozen countries on three continents by people from all walks of life to which you would say chris what's the big deal with that well you would need to know how do you get that many people over that many years on different continents with different jobs all saying the exact same thing without any contradiction whatsoever. Like how does that happen? Like I could see that happening if one person wrote the Bible. Like if one person wrote it you would think that there would probably be no contradictions. In fact, you would need to know that the Quran was written by one person. The writings of Buddha, one person. But the Bible was written over a span of 1,600 years by poets and prophets, princes, kings, sailors, soldiers, attorneys, doctors, farmers, scholars, shepherds, priests, historians, fishermen, tax collectors, and businessmen. And you ready for this? They actually wrote it in caves, 
ships, homes, palaces, prisons, and deserts. And yet the question of the day that I want you to grapple with is this. How did they end up all writing the exact same story? I'm going to tell you, next week is going to blow your mind. You're going to walk out of here going, oh my God, it is God's word. Because what you would need to know is this, that there were about 40 authors, 40 writers, but there is only one author, and his name is God. It is his autobiography. So men held the pen, but God's the one that spoke. In fact, um, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that all scripture, so like every bit of it, is God breathed. And, and that doesn't just mean that he said it. It actually means that he has the power to fulfill whatever it is that he put in there. So all scriptures God breathed, and it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, and righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. All that to say, it works. It works. It, it'll, it'll work in your marriage. It'll work in your finances. It'll work in your parenting. It'll work in your emotions. It'll work in this nation. It works. So here's what I wanted to do today. My challenge is, is how do I give you kind of an, a user's guide to the Bible in such a short amount of time that we have together? And so this is my best attempt at that. And you would need to know, number one, that the Bible is actually not written in chronological order. In fact, the Bible is actually, the books of the Bible are actually arranged by group type, which makes it kind of challenging for those of us that want to read it from cover to cover, because that's not how it was written. In fact, let me break this down as simple as I possibly can. In fact, I'm going to put the cookies on the bottom shelf for, for all of us today so that we all wind, uh, walk out of here today understanding this. Okay, so what you would need to know is that uh, the first five books of your Old Testament are actually what are called the law books, because these were the books that were given when the law was given. So they were written by Moses, and this is all about you know the Ten Commandments and the life of Moses and creation and the ten plagues in Egypt and the Red Sea. It's also been called the Pentateuch. The next group of books in your Old Testament are actually really fun. They're a fun read. They're what's called the historical section of the Bible, 12 books in all. And this is the history of Israel after Moses. So this is Joshua. How many of y'all remember? Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. Come on. Where you at? Where's my Baptist friends at? I know you're in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know you've sung that thing. Mm. <laughs> but this, the historical section documents from Joshua all the way to Esther. And what you would need to know is that Esther is the last book of your Old Testament historically. So like the Old Testament actually ends with Esther. But yet we all know that there are more books in the Old Testament. And that's why we have the poetical section. In fact, I've done this before. I'd encourage you to do this. And that is to read what's called a chronological Bible. So what it does, which by the way, you can get that for free on the YouVersion Bible app. It actually takes, for instance, the Psalms. And it inserts that Psalm directly into the historical section in the story exactly where it happened. It's a fascinating read. It makes it fun. You ought to try it sometime. And then the last section of your Old Testament is what's called the prophetical section. 
17 books in this section, and these are all the prophets that lived during the historical section. It's kind of interesting. And understanding this helps you to, to see how the Bible is actually laid out. In fact, the, his, the, the prophetical section is actually broken into two subcategories. There's what's called the major prophets, which is five books. And they're not major because they're any better. It's just that they're longer. And then we have the 12 minor prophets that are found in the, in the prophetical section. And understanding this helps us to know how the Bible has been organized. So that's your Old Testament. And then you get what's called 400 years of absolute silence. So there's no prophetic voice of God. There's no scriptures that are being written. This is when Israel returns uh, back from exile to the promised land. You, You get Alexander the Great and the Roman conquests and So much more. And after the 400 years of silence, the New Testament begins. And it begins with the Gospels. In fact, the word gospel actually means good news. Because how many of you all know Jesus? There's some good news, baby. Great news. Amazing news. In fact, I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence here today. I'm just telling you that when I first got saved, I didn't know some of these things. In fact, I didn't know that the Gospels, that are four books, are actually four different accounts of the exact same story. And so after Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, the early church, the first church, was birthed, and the historical section of your New Testament is recorded in the book of Acts. And you would need to know today that we as a church, we believe with everything on the inside of us that everything that happened in the book of Acts is available and needs to be happening today in 2023 here in North Dallas. And so like the world was experiencing this massive explosion of Christianity at this time. All kinds of churches were being planted. Tens of thousands of people were coming to faith in Christ. And there were these great church planters that began to write these letters to the churches that they planted, and they're called epistles. Now, an epistle is just a fancy way to say letter. So guys like Paul and Peter... They would write these letters to these churches, and they're massively important to us today because they give us doctrine, they show us how to live the Christian life, they're massively important to us. And then you get the last book of your Old Testament, it's the 66th book, it's the book of Revelation, and it's about the prophecy of the last days and eternity, and you get to discover how this whole thing is going to actually come to an end someday, which by the way, later on this year, I'm bringing you an entire series all about the end times, and you're going to absolutely, you're going to love it. So that is kind of how your Bible has been arranged. Now, let me share something with you today that I think is going to blow your mind, And it's what's called the mirror image of the Bible. So it's the story of the Bible in mirror form. And I'm just going to let you guys know, the screens are going to get a little funky. Things are going to get a little small. But just stick with me here because I want to explain this to you. And it's going to all make sense at the end. And I think that you're going to really, really like this, because the whole thing begins in Genesis chapter number one with God and righteous man in paradise. And righteous means perfect. So when God made man, he made him perfect. His body was perfect. There was no sin. He had a perfect relationship with God. He had no shame. Listen, Adam could walk with God and not fall over dead. Like his mind could comprehend the mysteries of the universe. Like God can converse with him and share things. His mind operated at 
Most people I know, your brains are not operating at 100%. <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But not Adam. It was perfect. Perfect. In fact, the world was the same way. The Garden of Eden was perfect. Do you know that at that time there was no rain on this earth? There was actually underground fountains that would feed the, the ecosystem. Like everything on this planet was perfect the way that God always intended things to be. But in, in Genesis chapter 3, Satan and sin enter the picture and mankind fell into sin. And any time that there's sin, it can't be in the presence of God because sin always separates you from God. And some of you feel that distance between you and the Lord right now. You know, it's interesting to me, you never have to ask somebody, hey, are you living in sin? Are you running from God? You know it. You feel it. You feel that distance between you and God. Nobody has to tell you. It's there. And when that happens, all of a sudden, life becomes messy. Things become very chaotic. And that's exactly what happened in this world. It became massively chaotic to the point that the world actually became judged and destroyed. And that's the story of Noah and the flood. So the world is jacked up. But God finds Noah. He finds a man that is righteous. He finds a man that is right and just. And he says, Noah, here's what I want to do. We're going to start this whole thing over again. And I'm going to use you to help repopulate the earth. We're going to make this thing right. Well, it didn't turn out well. Because man does what man always does. They sinned. In fact, mankind came together to be... And they actually began to build a tower that they were hoping to reach to heaven. They called it the Tower of Babel. And the premise of it was this. God, we're not going to do things your way. We're going to do things our way. We're going to create our own pathway. We're going to create our own systems to get to heaven because we're going to be just like God. And they literally created a one world government system. Same language, same goals. And while this was happening, God got in the middle of it, confused their languages, and nations were born. God said, listen, I need to get involved in this again, and I need to clear up the chaos, and I'm going to create some order. So he established the 12 tribes of Israel out of the holy people, the nation of Israel. And he gave them, he gave them the law, he gave them the instructions of what it would take for them to be able to be connected in with God. And the rest of your Old Testament is all about that story. Problem was, is that we never connect with God externally. The way that we connect with God has always been internally. Because you see... God's always been after one thing. He's always been after your heart. See, an easy way to understand the Bible is that the Old Testament is all about the external and the New Testament is all about the internal. So in enters God's solution to fix all of this. God sends his one and only son, Jesus. And if you'll notice on this, he is front and center. He's at the top of this chart right here because I want you to know that he is all things. In him, we live and move and we have our very being. Because the reality is, is that all of us, including the guy speaking to you today, we have all sinned. And there's a penalty to that sin. The price has to be paid. And Jesus said, I'll pay your price. Listen, God doesn't send people to hell that he's mad at. People that go to hell go so because they choose to pay their own sin bill. And I would say that you would be out of your mind 
crazy to pay your own sin bill when the bill has already been paid for. Paid for by the blood of Jesus. And so God said, listen, I need to get back involved and I need to create some, some order. And instead of having the 12 tribes of Israel, God creates the church and he uses the 12 disciples. And through these men and these people, he is going to create his holy people. And he said, I'm going to do it this dif- differently this time. I'm not going to write my laws on tablets of stone. Instead, I'm going to write it on their hearts hearts. And you would need to know today that's exactly where we're at today in biblical history. We are in the middle of what God has written. You are experiencing it. You are an active part of what the Bible has prophesied. In fact, I want you to think about this for a second. We are living in a time right now that more than ever before People are rejecting God's ways. I mean, think about this for a second. It should absolutely alarm you at the rate of which people are rejecting God's ways in the culture that we're living in right now. I have talked to so, I can't even keep up with the amount of people that have come to me and they've said, I just never imagined in my wildest dreams that we would be seeing what we're seeing in America happening today. Like five years ago, we would have never thought it. Ten years ago, we would have never imagined what we're seeing. Listen, we are living in a culture right now. Let me say it like this. Those of you that are my age and older, you remember a day and age in America where Jesus, the Bible, Church was widely accepted. Today, we live in a culture that is anti, anti-Christian anti values. Like, not just anti, I mean violently against the principles of God's word. We are living in a nation right now where a third of people in this nation consider themselves nuns. N-O-N-E. I want nothing to do with religion. I don't believe in God. I don't want to have anything to do with God. You can have your little fantasy to yourself. Like there's this idea that is happening right now at ramped up levels and it's not slowing down. In fact, to know what's about to happen next in God's calendar, prophetic calendar, you don't even need to be a Christian. You don't even need to read the Bible. It's referenced, it's talked about great detail in the Bible. All you need to do is turn on the news and you'll see that we are all headed towards the next event in Bible prophecy and that's we're going back to a one world government system. And listen to me, everybody. The Antichrist is going to be the final broker in this deal. Final broker. In fact, don't just think it random of the alliances that are right now happening in the Middle East. It's not random. It's not random that Russia and China are inserting themselves into what's happening there. And what's going to happen is this, that the Antichrist is actually going to rise to power. He is going to create a new buying and selling system in the world that you're not going to be able to buy anything. You won't be able to sell anything unless you have received the mark of the beast. That's that mark on your hand or on your forehead. Uh, Tatum and I, we just got back two days ago, three days ago, from, from Europe, and when I came through customs here in America, I went up to the custom agent there, and they asked me to come forward. I had my passport there. I went to offer it to him. He said, I don't need that. He said, just stand on that dot. He said, let me take your picture. So I stood on a dot, ladies and gentlemen, two seconds later. He had none of my information. He just took a picture. Two seconds later, he said, Mr. Lindbergh, Welcome home. I'm telling you that there's coming a day you're going to go to Walmart and you're going to be checking out. Beep. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) 
Self-checkout is going to look a whole lot different, you know? <laughs> well, I'm just telling you, God's going to see all this happening. And he's going to come and get his church, and he's going to come again, and the world will be judged and destroyed. And this time... He is not going to do it with water like he did with Noah. He is going to do it with purifying fire. And he's going to bind up that old Satan. And sin is going to exit. And then we're going to be able to spend the eternity not in some celestial retirement home. You're not going to be some little fat angel sitting on some cloud with your little harp and a never-ending church service. That's not heaven. That's called hell. We're going to actually be with Jesus. Instead, you're going to have God and redeemed man in paradise. Paradise. In fact, I want you to notice that word paradise there. Because the word paradise in English, the closest word that we have in the Hebrew and the Greek language, you ready for it? It's a resort. That's the word. That would have been a good place to say amen. You know what I'm saying? It's a resort. Come on, everybody. I'm just telling you, that's not the afterlife. No way, baby. That's life. This is the before life. That's life. And I'm telling you what, everybody, this is some good preaching today, whether you realize it or not. Like this is. So that's. That's a picture of your Bible that you can understand. And I really hope that as you see this, that it opens your eyes up to how the Bible has been arranged and this beautiful mirror picture of the Bible. And so I want to close today with a final, final, final thought. And that's this. I remember a couple years ago, I had a guy come to me and he asked me the question. He said, he said, Chris, what's the subject what do you think the subject of the Bible is? I said, well, what do you think it is? He said, well, I think the subject of the Bible is, is us, people. People. I said, actually, nothing could be further from the truth. Because the subject of the Bible, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is Jesus. To him who sits on the throne and under the Lamb be blessing and glory and honor and power, both now and evermore. And I know that you're thinking today, but why, why is that such a big deal? Here's why. Listen, because the entire Bible speaks to him. It all talks about Jesus. And I know what some people are thinking. They're like, yeah, but he doesn't even show up till midway through the Bible. <laughs> no, you need to understand that he is all throughout the book of Genesis. He is the fourth man in the fiery furnace. He is all throughout the book of Psalms. In fact, next week you're going to hear about the 300 prophecies about him in the Old Testament. In fact, Jesus himself said in John chapter 5, verse 39, he said, you search the scriptures. Now time out. What were the scriptures at that point? Remember, the New Testament hadn't even been written at this point. So in other words... You, you're searching the Old Testament scriptures because you think those rules, <laughs> you think they're going to give you eternal life. No. No, 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 no. Scriptures actually point to me. You say, Chris, why is that so important? It's because that's how I read my Bible. I read my Bible to find Jesus. I read my Bible to find Jesus. And I'm telling you that it becomes alive and so much fun when you begin to read your Bible to find Jesus. So Jesus is the subject. We are the object. What do you think the verb of the Bible is? 
And I know that a lot of people are probably thinking it's got to be love. And if that was what you were thinking, you are close. But there's actually something greater. Jesus said, says in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he gave. So he didn't just have love. He gave it. His one and only son and whoever believes in him shall not perish. But you're going to be with Jesus for forever. You'll have eternal life. And that's why I need everybody. Christians, non-Christians to understand that when you see the Bible this way, it changes everything. You'll never read the Bible again today be, uh, the same way again because the verb of the Bible is giving. It's giving. Let me tell you what God gave you. God loved you so much that he didn't just talk about his love, he demonstrated his love. And he gave you his one and only son. He did something for you that nobody else is lining up to do for you right now. He gave his one and only son for you, not to die on the cross to save you from your sins. No, he gave his son to be slaughtered. Slaughtered. While he watched. It's the greatest extravagant expression of love ever and the only reasonable response to that is to give him my everything let me tell you something ladies and gentlemen the reason why we give is because he gave the reason why I give my life the reason why I give my everything is because he gave his life he gave his everything Listen, the reason why we give, the reason why we're planting another, a second campus, why we are sending $250,000 to South Asia to reach the precious people of South Asia is because he gave us everything. We're going to give our everything. The reason why we drill water wells and we reach into the lives and rescue these precious girls out of sex trafficking. And the reason why we're touching the next generation all around this campus and we're going into the juvenile detention centers and into every correctional facility facility in America and why we translate the Bible into different languages that it's never been and the reason why we continue to go the reason why we give is because he gave his everything and when you see it through that mindset and those lenses it changes everything and so now when I read the Bible I read it and I go oh look at how generous look at how he gave I'm going to do the same thing. I close with this scripture. It says in 1 John, it says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. and We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and our sisters. And hey, everybody, that is what your Bible is all about. Amen, everybody. Amen. Amen. So do me a favor, right where you're at, would you just bow your heads? You know, I know that you may be here today and maybe you're already going through that bad time in 2023. Maybe there's confusion. Maybe you find yourself in that place where sin is separating you from God and you feel it. You've been carrying your own shame and your own guilt. It's time more than ever before to fall in love with God's word. To allow him to do something on the inside of you that you could never do in and of yourself. You know, I don't know why it is. Why do we run from God like we do? When we see Adam, he did that. 
we have this lie that we've bought into that if I actually turn around, God's going to be mad at me and he's going to take away all my fun and it's just going to be difficult. And Can I just tell you that if you will finally just stop and turn around, you will find your Father, your God, with his arms outstretched to you, ready to welcome you home. He's not mad at you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And so, Lord, today I pray for my church family that I love so much. I pray, God, that you would deposit on the inside of us, Lord, a passion for your word. As culture and society is fighting against your standards, I pray, God, that we would fall in love with the direction that you've given to us. It's your, your love letter to us. So right now, God, we just purpose to live our lives on what your word says. Not being moved by what we feel, but moved by the word of God. And if you're here today and you're away from Jesus, come on, why don't you pray this prayer with me? Surrender your life to him. Just say, Jesus, I give you my life. All of it. I surrender And I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God. Lord, I'm asking you today to make me new. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And all God's people, come on in the house. Come on, say amen. And amen. Praise God. Well, everybody, I'm looking forward to seeing you here tonight, 6 p.m., for our pursuit tonight of prayer. We're going to worship. We're going to pray. We're going to see God move among us in a massive, massive way. God bless you, everybody. Amen. Amen. What a powerful message. God just gave us as a gift this morning, right? Hey, so if you commit your life to the Lord today for the first time or you just need a fresh start with the Lord, I want to ask you, please text Jesus to 51010. We want to walk with you through this journey. We know that it's not always uh, easy, but we want to be with you to walk through this journey. This is the best decision you could ever make. Also, if you call this church home, you can uh, return your tithes and give your, your offerings through the number on the screens, 51010. Just text GIVE, the ways to give will be there for you to do your tithes and offerings. And please, if you're just visiting and just coming here for the first time, please feel welcome. No obligation for you to do anything here, okay? Also, uh, tonight, as Pastor said, we have our pursuit night. So as a church, we'll come together to pray for our community, for pray for one another. And we know that we're going to come together and pray and worship the Lord. And we know that He's going to talk to us. Amen? Amen. So let's stand up. The prayer team will come forward. And if you have any prayer requests, we want to pray with you. So come forward. We want to pray and we want to see God doing miracles in your life. All right. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for your presence here, for the word you gave us, Lord. Let this word make roots in our lives and bring fruit to you Lord we pray that you give us your word for this for this week Lord let us leave everything that you have for us this week protect us protect our families and let us see and have the peace that you have for us this season Lord in Jesus name I pray amen amen God bless you and see you tonight at 6 p.m.